Hey guys, it's Danae and you're, we're, wow. And we're back with another episode of A Millennial Voice, the show. Um, I'm here with the Philadelphia Sunday Sun, as always, every Sunday at 2 p.m. Make sure you're checking us out weekly at www.phyllasun.com. With that being said, I'm going to introduce my guest, who you see is here with me, and then I'm going to let him talk a little bit about himself. So I have here with me Frederick Scott. He's a designer who lives in Philly, right? You're in Philly. Yep, I'm in Philadelphia. Awesome, awesome. So, did you like prefer Fred, Frederick? Like, um, I prefer Fred. Uh, I prefer Fred. Okay. Um, mom calls me Freddy though. Oh, um, cute! Mom. Shout out to moms. Okay, uh, so Fred, um, just introduce yourself. Like, give us a little bit of a background about who you are, the business, all that great stuff. All right, that's a pretty broad question, but I think I can. <laughs> My name is Frederick Scott. I'm from Philadelphia, PA. Um, and I have a brand. I have a namesake brand called Frederick Scott. Mm. Uh, I started the brand probably two years ago. Um, and I'm just taking the ground running, taking it day by day and just living this creative, uh, I guess, lifestyle right now. Awesome. Awesome. So your brand is named after you, which is super cool. Um, but does do you think that that adds any extra pressure to you? Or I think it's pressure. Honestly, I think it's the pressure that I needed. So before, mm. before starting this brand, I had another brand called Honor Society. Okay. And I was a brand in high school um, for my last two years of high school. Mm. And I was doing it kind of every so often while I was in college. Yeah. I went to college at Westchester University. Oh, um, wow. So did I. Yeah, I went to Westchester. So while I was at Westchester, I did my brand Honor Society a little bit but not mm -hmm. as much um, okay and it just didn't feel like a real project to me but I always wanted it to be a real project mm -hmm. so I thought the added pressure of doing a brand with my name on it had to happen because um, I wasn't taking anything else seriously mm. okay and do you think that that added pressure like or do you think that that added pressure has kind of like worked to your benefit do you kind of like are you reaping the benefits of that pressure yeah, yeah for sure because when you don't have your name on a project um you might not receive like a lot of backlash. Whereas if your name's on the project, you have to be intentional with everything because you know, your name is like kind of all you have. Yeah, I yeah. Need to come out and be like pristine. If I'm right. gonna things up. Okay, so I, again, Frederick Scott, the man and also the brand that rhymes. Um, <laughs> how, did, how does your personality influence your work? How does my personality influence my work? Um, I think I'm pretty soft-spoken. So I like my work to be loud. Mm. Um, I wear honestly I wear like muted colors I mean tonal colors so I like earth colors um, I like mm -hmm. black I like whites but in my work I use colorful um, colors just because that's loud and it's kind of the person that I am inside not the person that I showcase for the most part yeah so I would like to have a lively personality I think I do it in some cases but mm -hmm. I'm more of a tonal person but my brand is loud so okay Okay, I feel the vibes. I feel the vibes. I mean, I noticed you have green nails, and I noticed that that matches your Avi on um, Instagram. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like, is that then, part uh, of your brand? Is the green kind of like saying something is coming? Like, what's up? So the green, it's just like an electric green. I don't know. The green looks good. I haven't really figured out why I'm using the green yet. Okay. Like, you know, it's very lively. It's an accent color. I know it stands. That green in particular stands. It looks really good next to next to a lot of colors. So right. you can put it next to a black, it'll look good. You can put it next to a pink, it'll look good. And that's kind of how I see myself. I can stand and be in any environment mm. and out, but also look good next to um and blend in pretty well as well. Okay. I'm just curious. So you said that your personality is very vibrant, but you give off this like really like cool, like laid back demeanor. Why mm. do you think that that is? Hmm. Honestly, I wasn't really comfortable with myself before, so I wanted to give off a cool demeanor just so that I didn't um, embarrass myself. Mm -hmm. But as like as the year, as this year progressed, honestly, I became a lot more comfortable uh, displaying my personality. Um, okay. So I'm able to be a little bit more vibrant, more more vibrant than I was before. Okay, okay. Um, so I know sneakers have influenced your taste in fashion, right? But how yeah. do you think sneaker culture has influenced your brand or has it? No, nah, sneaker influence, sneaker culture is actually where like the brand started um, mm -hmm. for me. 
back in, I want to say, so going to take you back to a long, long journey. But in sixth grade, um, the reason why I wanted to start a brand is because my dad had a, he was launching a brand called Messiah Wear. So my mm -hmm. father's a pastor. So uh, Messiah means like Christ wear, obviously close. Uh, he never, that, ne that brand never came um, to fruition, but mm -hmm. the idea that he put out for starting a brand inspired me to start a brand. Wow. Um, so like the early brands that I was making back in seventh grade or the, like the designs I were making, they were like Abercrombie and Fitch kind of vibes. Mm -hmm. But um, I stumbled across Ubic, the place that I work at right now. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, I kind of fell in love with like a scene or like a culture. Yeah. And uh, by going in there, that's where I kind of got the direction for where I want to make like the types, <laughs> the type of clothes that I want to make. Um, so sneakers, you know, if you have good sneakers, you need a good shirt. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I always complimented um, the things that I made. Right. Okay. So you mentioned your work um, in Ubik, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I was reading up on you, and I know that back in 2017, so what that was like four years ago, you kind of like weren't satisfied with where you were at in life. And now fast forward like four years later, and you're working at this, you know, the store and you're making these clothes and like your clothing is in storefronts. So I'm just curious, like, how much has changed um, since 2017, when you weren't really satisfied uh, with where you're at, or where you were at, I'm sorry. And are you satisfied right now? Um, so in 2017, um, it was a little breakup, but I, yeah, for sure. Um, can you ask the question one more time? It kind of broke up. Oh, um, yeah, bit. no, it's okay. I actually just got the notification that my internet was unstable, so I wasn't sure if you got it. Um, but basically, I no. was just asking, yeah, so uh, can you hear me now, though? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, um, so basically what I was asking was, you know, when I was reading up on you, um, I read something from back in 2017 where you just, like, weren't really satisfied where you with where with where you were at in life. Um, and you just kind of didn't really have your way figured out. You didn't have your path figured out. And so I'm wondering since 2017, which has now been four years ago, um, what has changed? And do you feel satisfied today with where you're at? So if I, so in 2017, I wrote this blog post and I was, I wrote it while I was working at Rite Aid while in college. Mm -hmm. um, it was my senior year. Well, it's supposed to be my senior year. And I was just like, damn, like, I'm not doing like near, damn near anything that I really want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any internships lined up. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do post-grad. And I honestly was going into my fifth year of school. Um, and a fifth year of school was kind of bad for me because I was on a four-year scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I had to pay for the fifth year. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, damn, I wasted these last four years um, not doing what I was supposed to do or just not walking with a purpose um in college i just was partying and drinking a lot. party school so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so westchester, at westchester i was just partying and drinking a lot but while i was working at um righty i just realized that this wasn't what i wanted to do the manager that i had he was telling me how like within four years i could climb like the ladder of righty mm, you were uh, just like i don't want that yeah, and that conversation in itself is just like, damn, I can't, I can't be doing this. So um, literally after I made that post, I applied for an internship at this uh, creative agency downtown called Little Giant Creative. Mm -hmm. um, and within the email, I told them that I don't need a salary. I just need to be in the environment. And uh, from there, mm -hmm. got the internship. Luckily, they paid me still. And mm -hmm. um, I just started grinding. Um, and I was around like-minded people um, who were older than me as well. So yeah. I was able to see a path for like um, success. So okay. within four years, I don't know, I just think I, I started to align myself with a purpose. Mm -hmm. In the last two years, I started being intentional. Mm -hmm. um, and this year, I'm just trying to just step into the person that I'm, I'm supposed to be, I guess. <sighs> I just love that. That's so beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, I get like really mushy. I'm like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. Okay. Okay. So uh, now, you know, your brand is really known for like this rugby t-shirt. It's not a t-shirt, but this rugby shirt that you have, right? Um, tell us a little bit about the design behind that. And I know you also make um, hats as well. So tell us a little bit about those two things. So the rugby for me um, has always been like a favorite 
one of my favorite apparel pieces mm -hmm. uh, because on Easter, um, you know, you would wear like clothes from Ralph Lauren. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my favorite pieces from Ralph Lauren is the rugby shirt that they have. Um, so I know when I, I knew that when I started a brand, I wanted to create like a nice looking rugby. Um, so that's like the inception of the rugby. And then mm -hmm. with the beanie, um, I just had the, the perfect head for a beanie. So yeah, I, just I see. To make, yeah, I just wanted to make something that could fit my head. So for me, when I design, it has to start with me. I have to be able to wear it. And then okay. once I'm able to see myself in it, yeah. maybe I'll start to see other people in it. Yeah. It's still kind of weird to see other people in the clothes that I make because I make them for me. Mm. Um, you know, when I see others look good in it, yeah. it is a good feeling. So for my design process, it starts with me and then it goes like outward. Okay, okay. And so you basically answered my next question, which was like, who do you create for? But you really create for yourself. And then it's kind of like extends to that when other people buy your merchandise. Yeah, I mean, I would like to start creating for other people because I mean, that's when the business side comes in and play. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, right now, I only create when I need something. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna sustain this as a business, I need to create when other people's needs, other people need stuff as well. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about that then. So do you kind of have like a select number of shirts that you create? And then it's just like, if you get it, if you get it, if you don't, you have to wait till the next time we're in stock. Like what's that process like? So right now I run off of minimums. Um, okay. I have a manufacturer overseas and okay. they give me 50 per every time that I create something. So for the rugby's, I had 50 of the strawberry and chocolate and mm -hmm. 50 of this chocolate and vanilla. Mm -hmm. and I I have a few left over there, but I don't have too many left. Um, okay. And then for the beanies, it was kind of like the same process. Um, and those are big minim minimums for somebody that just started. Um, so yeah. the fact that I sold through those pretty well is very, very, very telling. For yeah. Me. Yeah, that's amazing. So what was the process like sourcing a manufacturer, especially somebody who's like overseas? Like, what was that like for you? Because I could imagine it would it was probably a super tedious um, task. Honestly, it wasn't that hard. Um, really? Yeah, so a lot of people are scared of Alibaba.com, mm -hmm. but Alibaba can work to your advantage if you know how to use it. Okay. Uh, so all I did was go on Alibaba, type in polo rugby's, and then I would look at all the people that are making rugby's. Uh -huh. And I would hit those manufacturers up and see if they make custom rugby's or okay. rugby's from like a pattern. And uh -huh. then I would look at the quality of their work. Yeah. Eventually I would come across somebody that created those. Okay. And so tell us a little bit about your color palette. My color palette. So one of my favorite colors outside of lime green is um, a salmon pink. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really find a salmon when I was creating a rugby's. I found something more like a strawberry. Okay. Um, I wanted to make a color story around the strawberry. And yeah. um, I realized that I realized that to have like a successful um, ice cream shop, I'm really big on analogies. So I'm about to mm -hmm. Okay. So I love it. So to have like a successful ice cream shop, you have to have like really good base flavors before you extend the like. The freaky. The, yeah, the freaky stuff. Yeah. So the base flavors for ice cream shop are vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Um, and if you don't master those flavors, I don't think you can. I don't really care about your Rocky Road and your. Yeah. Cream if those aren't good. And that's how I'm kind of taking my approach to the brand right now with the first drop. If um if I don't have my foundation built well, I can't extend to do things greater and grander than um, right. outside of the foundation. Can I tell you that I just love that analogy, like yeah. that you just gave me? Cause I'm just like, that makes so much sense. Like if you can't do the basics, how can you do the freaky stuff? That's so, wow. I'm like mind blown right now. Um, and it also just lends itself to how good you are at marketing. Cause I know you said that you're working in marketing as well. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, but I, I, so I wanted to ask like, how has your, uh, I guess, marketing career, how has that like amplified your business or how did the two work together? Um, so like working in marketing for me, at least like you learn how to story tell very well, mm -hmm. and you know, that products really don't sell without stories. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can see that bad products can sell with stories. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, marketing, working in marketing right now, has just, um, it showed me that to sell a product, you need to story tell. Right. And marketing, my brand, well, my first brand is honestly what kind of brought me to marketing. Mm -hmm. 
months. Back in high school, I um, worked all summer to launch my first brand, Honor Society. I saved up about, I want to say $800 to like make two t-shirts, uh, like a, a run of two t-shirts, um, purchase the t-shirts, and thought that I could just post them on what, Twitter back then, or Tumblr. Mm-hmm. And they um, just didn't. Yeah, and they didn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was like real hurtful because I was like, damn, I made these shirts. Like, why is nobody not buying them? Mm-hmm. And I came to find out that I didn't even market the product. So um, I had a class. I was grateful enough to go to a high school out in the suburbs um, where we had like mad classes. Like, I think we had. By the way, I went to have it for high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. I went um, to Abington. You went to Abington? Yeah. But I went to have it for high school and um, we had a marketing one in class. So I was like, all right, I'm going to take this class and see what happens. And my love for marketing. Okay. They don't know it, I guess. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, we're going to like pivot a little bit and we're going to talk about the recent storefront that you um, acquired. I would love to talk about that kind of like the process of how you even got there and what that moment was like for you because, you know, you it, it it's like you started something that you didn't know it was going to become what it became and now not only are you selling stuff but you can like visualize and see your pieces in stores so I would love to hear uh what that's been like for you all right cool so um it's been a surreal experience for one um when I started the brand or when I even when I started to want to make clothes. Um, I always envisioned myself having like the storefront, like you can see Frederick Scott, like when you walk into the store. So to be able to do that within the first six months of me like launching my brand, it's just very, very like telling me I'm in the right direction. Um, yeah. But that whole process started. Um, so remember, I work at Atmos, um, and that's where my clothes are at in the storefront. Um, back in December, um, I wanted to start, I wanted to do something for Black History Month. Um, and you see a lot of companies right now pandering to, you know, Black artists and Black creatives. Um, and I didn't want to necessarily take that approach. I know that we had a lot of, um, we had a lot of Black creatives that, we have a lot of Black creatives that work at Atmos right now. Mm-hmm. So my whole approach to that, uh, well, our whole approach, my bad, I'm like jumbled with my wrist right now. No, it's okay. Our whole approach was that we can't really focus on people outside of our ecosystem if we're not uplifting the people within our ecosystem first. Right. Um, so we started this initiative called Amplify and it's like the Amplify the Voices within our community. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once we see that, once we are once we do well with the voices within and we have a process, um, then we'll be able to amplify outside of our um, community. So the first person that we used was myself um, because I was, the only, I was the first one to have something ready to go. Um, mm-hmm. And honestly, I didn't think it would ever happen. And then it happened. And, you know, I'm just like, oh, shit. Um, yeah. So, yeah, having my having my stuff in the store, it's kind of, I haven't really, it hasn't really sunk in yet. Like, yeah. I see it all the time on social media. Um, I see it when I go to the store. My friends tell me it's a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. I saw it and I was like, that's amazing. That's so cool that I, like know someone who has their stuff in like a storefront and it's not just like just oh hanging out like a a piece or two it's like literally like a whole display so I think that that's really cool yeah the craziest thing is too that people actually bought the stuff that was in the store which I didn't expect um right like why are you selling your stuff short like I'm not telling myself but I don't I just don't it's kind of I don't know I'm about to get all sappy but it's just crazy how like how much can change in a year like yeah. last year I wasn't really aligning myself like with a purpose I was kind of lost mm-hmm. it's crazy that once I started aligning myself with a purpose and like like all these doors just like started opening Open. so it's kind of like I don't know it's yeah. it's greater than me so it's yeah. just yeah, it's kind of crazy so I don't I'm not able to believe it right now 
So. Okay. And yeah. you know what? I, I th- I'm really happy that you brought up the importance of aligning with your purpose because I think some people, um, and I've been talking to a lot of like small business owners and designers and stuff like that lately. Um, and there's been like a common thread, which is like figuring out your purpose in it and going forward with it, which I think a lot of people who, um, you know, don't have a small business or who don't own something um, that's like tangible like that. I think that a lot of the times they don't necessarily understand that it's not as easy as just saying, I'm going to start a business today and it's just going to blow up and be kind of like what you experienced when you first started, you know, putting out your stuff a couple years ago and it just didn't yeah. take off the way that you wanted it to because it wasn't like aligned with where you're with your purpose or at least you weren't ready for it too. Um, so I'm really happy that you brought that point up because again, I just think that that's something that a lot of people just don't know exist um but that's yeah. dope. that's dope so okay uh well congrats again on your store um so my okay. next question to you is if you could see one person in your designs who would it be and why one person in my designs that's a good question one person um Damn, that's a good question. I want to get a, give a good answer too. Um, da, 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 da. maybe like honestly, this is like this is an easy answer, but maybe like my dad. I don't know because wow. his name is Frederick Scott. Yeah, and you know Frederick Scott is like a lineage brand. Yeah. <clears throat> That's amazing. I'm happy that you chose somebody who means so much to you, Um, especially because, you know, your dad is kind of like the catalyst of all this in a way, you know, who knows what would have happened if you wouldn't have tried to drop his clothing line when you were in the sixth grade, you know, and if you didn't have that like representation and like that kind of like visualization that even though it didn't come into fruition for him, that it is something that was very possible and tangible for you. So I love that answer. Yeah, I mean, I can easily go downstairs and give him a shirt, you know, (laughs) um yeah probably my dad like I mean I really don't do the brand for like celebrities to like get my yeah like if they come across it they get it Um, yeah I didn't get that vibe from you though so that makes sense and I don't reach out to influencers so it's just like I mean regular people but yeah probably within that my dad because it's probably it holds some meaning I guess okay yeah, no, because when I looked at your stuff, and this goes completely against what you just said about not focusing on celebrities, but I could see it like on like a Tyler, the creator, or like a Pharrell, or like a Childish Gambino, like sort of vibe, the hats too. No. Um, yeah, but that's dope. So uh, we talked about your shirts, we talked about the hats. Do you have anything um, coming up next that you're planning to drop? Like, do you see yourself expanding? How do you see yourself expanding? Like, what's next? Um, let me think. So for the summer, I think I'm going to put out some t-shirts. Okay. Um, and then in the fall, I would like to drop like an essentials collection. So just mm-hmm. with, like sweatsuits, so hoodie, sweatpants, um, maybe like another rugby, not maybe, but definitely another rugby for sure. Okay. Maybe just some like an overshirt, just things that I already wear. Um, yeah. I just want to end the year consistent. Um, so at least doing like maybe four more releases. Ooh. Just because of the last brand, um, the thing that I wasn't was consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I would like to do that. But I think the main thing, the main thing that I'm focusing on right now, um, outside of the clothes, is the story that I want to tell, mm-hmm. and making sure that the story that I'm telling, that I that I want to tell, is being told. Yeah. I mean, that's honestly just to create a space for people that look like you and I. Yeah. To be in the clothes that I'm making, almost. Because um, sure. growing up, like one of my favorite brands was Ralph Lauren, but I always felt detached from the brand because, like, yeah, because it was definitely catered to a yeah. particular audience. <laughs> Yeah, and now you have, like, a lot of brands that are using, like, black faces for, like, the marketing. Uh, don't get me but started. it feels kind of disingenuous a little bit. Yeah. Because, like, now you see a lot of people using black faces, but there aren't. They're using black faces to tell their stories, but there aren't being told. There aren't a lot of black stories being told, told mm-hmm. by people within yeah. that face. 
Right. So my brand right now, I want to tell a black story of like luxury condo mm-hmm. while also making it attainable to like, right. you know, people that look like you and I. Yeah. And you know, like as a model, like I can a hundred percent attest to what like whatever you're feeling about there being like just using a face, I can a hundred percent attest to that. Yeah. But we're not gonna talk about me or my qualms today. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's something I can definitely like go on like a long tangent about. Yeah. Because um, it kind of grinds my gears a little bit. It's just I understand a lot. And I I don't know, I just don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you brought up how um, in the past you haven't really been consistent as an artist or as a creative. Can you just speak a little bit to how difficult it is to remain consistent when you're giving something so much of yourself as um, as your brand, you know, or for your brand or for anything that you're creating? Like, how difficult is that for you? I feel like it's only difficult if you're not being 100% you. Because I feel like if you're being 100% you, whatever you're creating is going to be an extension of you. Yeah. Right. Um, but I also feel like in that same breath, um, you don't force things and you just allow yourself to create freely. Yeah. Um, and work a little bit more natural. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot easier. I think before I was forcing myself to create um, and forcing myself to think that the brand was the only way that I would sustain some sort of income Mm -hmm. Uh, but when I got another job when I allowed myself to be like a little bit more Mm -hmm. free-flowing with the brand and didn't put so much pressure on myself I was able to produce um and put out quality garments I guess yeah yeah no I definitely agree um I think it's important to have a goal but to not be so tied to the end goal that you're not willing to kind of like skew and do other things at the same time because you have no idea how things will match up or help you you know further yourself you know like you said you're the company you're working for um has allowed you to put your clothes in a storefront you know whereas like somebody else might have been like oh, okay well I don't want to work for this company because I'm really focused on my clothes and I don't think that the two like line up or I think that they might not mesh well and so then you you know you lose out on those opportunities when you're just so fixed so I think um the way that you're looking at everything um is really good and you know as you said, like things have started to change since you've kind of started to do things differently and align yourself differently. So yeah, um, my bad, I mean to cut you off. No, it's okay. That was done. <clears throat> but I also think like when you start real life, I guess like post college, it's kind of easier to create as well. Yeah. Because when I was like 18 or like 17 when I was creating, I was always creating from the lens like it'd be successful and then buy like 22 23 24 i'll have like that trophy whether it's a car whether it's a certain amount of money whether you know it's a lifestyle Mm -hmm. the brand whereas now i mean i've been in the workforce for three years i guess um i graduated college two years ago and i know life doesn't work like that um and i think now that i know life works a certain way i'm able to project and like create my goals within that same vein Right. dreamy they're kind of like realistic yeah most part yeah awesome awesome well that was the last question I had for you is there anything else that you wanted to add that I might not have gotten to I'm trying to think if if it's like a no that's fine I don't want to put you on the hot in the hot seat or anything nah I mean these questions really helped because it allowed me to like think about some things that I might not have thought about outside so, yeah, that makes me so happy to hear because that means I did my job. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so then, I mean, since you don't have anything else, I guess the last thing I will ask is uh, what advice do you have for young creatives or somebody who might be looking to create their own brand? Um, well, any of, well, one piece of advice that I have for like anybody, whether it's a creative or somebody in the workforce is, um, to realize that where you're at is not not necessarily where you're going to finish at. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're at like a job that you don't like, that isn't the job that you'll be at forever. Right. Um, if your brand isn't really taken off the way you need it to be, um, that's not where your brand has to be at forever. If you're in a state where you really can't create, you don't you're not going to be there forever. 
but yeah. take like what you're learning from that experience in that particular moment and utilize it to like advance so if you're in a job that you don't like <clears throat> right now just find out like what positives come from it whether it's learning soft skills whether it's learning um organization or whatever just mm-hmm. so that you be ready for that big moment whenever it comes yeah Wow. Well, thank you so much for that. I'm definitely going to take little nuggets of what you said and also apply it to my um, life too, because you're preaching to my audience, but you're also preaching to me. So um, thank you for that. And just being so candid about your experience and, you know, uh, where you come from, where you think you're going, how you're feeling, how you were feeling um, years ago. I, I really appreciate your honesty. And I definitely do see the story behind uh, your brand. And I think that is so important. So I just want to encourage you to keep going. Um, and I also want to thank you so much for coming on my show and talking to me. Um, it's been a pleasure to learn more about you and your business. Thank and you. I'll definitely be keeping up with you. Um, and before we go, can you just drop your socials and your website? Yes. So my website is www.frederick-scott.com. My Instagram is Frederick scott with sctt um and my twitter it's a little bit too personal that's okay that's okay i don't drop the. i don't drop my twitter either because i'm like y'all are not gonna see what i'm talking about in my everyday yeah. life like no Twitter is um the think space so yep. twitter i'll probably just leave them alone but yep, it's a f-r-e-d e-r-i-c-k okay um, not f-r-e-d f-r-e-d r-i-c-k Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Um, and also you guys, uh, me and, and Fred were talking earlier about um, me doing a write up on him as well. So make sure you guys are looking out for that. Um, you can find that at, you'll be able to find that at www.phyllisun.com. I'll announce that as well. Or you can get our papers in print for only $40 a year. Again, Fred, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for viewing. I'm Danae with the Philadelphia Sunday Sun, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, Fred. Peace.